Starting 2024 off with a bang. You will hate me after this one, trust me. I'm ready for it. This is my review for Monarch Legacy of Monsters. If you guys hated what I did with my list of 2023 best and worst films, you're going to hate me here, but I don't give a shit. So, I'm going to recap them pros and cons, as per usual. So, episode one, we open on Skull Island and John Goodman running away from the spider thing from Skull Island. Also, this green screen is sh so, John Goodman throws his bag in the seat. Fast forward to 2015, where the main girl, Kate, is landing in Tokyo to get her dead dad's stuff in order. But, when she goes to his apartment, there's people living there, and it turns out that it's her half-brother and his mom. Oh my gosh, what a coincidence. Then we flash back to the 50s, which is honestly the best part of this show. I would rather have seen a show about just this than all the other BS. Anyway, these people are younger John Goodman, Kay, who is a doctor, and Lee, Wyatt Russell. They break into this place where they rehash Godzilla 2014 and that it's not toxic, but they think it is. Back to modern, Kate is trying to prove that she's related to her dad and then throws a fit and leaves. Back to the 50s, they go into the place. Just so you know, they switch between 50s and 2015. So, Kate is walking back to the airport when alarms sound saying Godzilla's coming. So her and Kentaro and his mom go into the shelter. So, do we see Godzilla? Nah, false alarm. If you think that was bad, just wait. Anyway, during this drill, Kate has PTSD, because of course she does. And guess what? It turns out she was on the bridge in 2014. So we see Godzilla for like five seconds, and it's a flashback, so it doesn't really count. And she was on a bus and can't save some kids, so they all die except her. So in the 50s, Kate decides she needs samples, so she goes into the pit they found full of muto or insect eggs or something. Modern, the alarm is canceled because Godzilla decides he'd rather not destroy Tokyo in the MonsterVerse. So Kate and Kentaro go to their dad's old study thing and find a safe with John Goodman's bag in it. Then we're introduced to May, who is a tech genius. Oh my gosh, a young diverse woman who happens to be a tech genius and can fix or hack into anything. How new and original. Basically, her and Kentaro dated at some point, so she belittles Kentaro for breaking up with her, or I guess ghosting her, but she agrees to get the files for them from the bag. So Monarch gets an alert that someone has broken in and are obviously worried because they're basically the government. So we meet Tim, or as I like to call him, Mr. Cuck. And he decides he's going to sort this out before his superiors catch wind of it. Flashback to right after 2014, we see Kate's dad, Hiroshi, and he's just there to say, I'm leaving for Alaska, bye. He then runs away from his grown-ass daughter who's throwing a temper tantrum like a two-year-old girl who has just been told no to getting the latest princess doll. So, on May's computer, they find a photo of Kay, who happens to be Kate and Kentaro's grandmother, standing in Godzilla's footprint. Back in the 50s, Kay and Lee go down to the eggs while Randa holds the rope. But an earthquake happens, and the eggs hatch, and the endo swarmers go after Lee and Kay. This is one of the best scenes in the MonsterVerse, because it's actually life and death and suspenseful. And these characters in the 50s are some of, if not the best human characters in the entire MonsterVerse. So Lee and Kay try to escape, but the bugs build up like ants. Lee is a trained military soldier, so he gets up the rope quick. But Kay, who has probably never executed a rope climb in her life, is slower. And it's refreshing to see in a modern show, because instead of... <laughs> K is actually struggling. Something Disney can never have in their shows. So Randa is desperately trying to get her up while Lee is trying to shoot the bugs, but Randa loses his grip and she dies. Just wait. Episode 2, we flash back about 7 years where Lee is being chewed out by the general guy for beating up his fellow soldiers. Turns out they were harassing a woman though, so Lee stepped in and he's excused of punishment. And then, he's assigned to protect a new Japanese scientist, which just so happens to be Kay. I love how he assumes she's an assistant because it's the 50s as well. So, they get into a jeep and drive into the forest because Kay is trying to investigate patterns left by a creature. Back to 2015, Kentaro goes to his father's office, decides to turn into the rage monster, and then finds Lee Shaw's files, and inside is an ad for a retirement home. Back to the 50s, where the development and banter is so good, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but props to the writers here, which is the only time I'm going to be saying this. We then meet young Bill Randa who has a camera on him. Lee pulls his gun, but Bill says he's also a scientist, and it turns out he's looking for the same thing Kay is. Back to modern. Kate is headed for the airport and is clearly being followed. Then Mr. Cuck comes back and creepily tries to confront her about the files, but she runs away, thinking that they're trying to kidnap her, and why would you run? This guy said you're not in trouble. I found myself screaming at the screen here, saying, just cooperate. She's caught by this bodyguard lady, though, and is put in a car with a bag over her head, which triggers her PTSD, because of course it does. So she throws a fit and makes the car crash and runs away again. In the 50s, Shaw says he's out and leaves. Bill mentions the first time he might have seen Godzilla. Then they find the USS Lawton, the ship he mentioned in Skull Island. And this plot is just glossed over, and I hate it, but I'll get to that in a minute. Back to modern. Kate finds May and Kentaro also escaped when Mr. Cock and Bodyguard Lady showed up at his door. Ren and Kay go into the destroyed Lawton, which has been somehow dragged here into the Philippines. They walk in the halls, Bill gets his stuff that he had, and Lee sees the patterns in the sky, so he goes back to help Ren and Kay. Modern, we get a talking scene, basically saying they're going to find old Shaw. Ren and Kay see some horrifying dead bodies covered in snot. <laughs> Kay and May and Kentaro go to the retirement home Shaw's in, and we get Kurt Russell. We find out Shaw is a prisoner here and he cuts his house arrest band off and gives him one minute to decide to go find Hiroshi or not. Episode 3 picks up with Shaw and the others in a really funny car escape scene where Shaw doesn't know how to start it. They escape and back to the 50s. The year is 1954. Bill and Lee reveal to the general from earlier that they found Godzilla's footprint. After three episodes, we finally get something to do with Godzilla. They tell the general guy they need funding and uranium to lure Godzilla out. They don't get the full truth. The general obviously wants to kill him, but we find that out later. 
In modern times, May managed to digitize Randa's cassettes, and she asks how Shaw looks so good for being in his 90s. He says, good genes, but I'm sure that it'll be revealed soon. Wink. Back to 1954, where they've discussed the Council Bravo nuclear test, and Rand is here, which is retcon, because if you remember, in Skull Island, he was trying to convince the senator that the test was trying to kill something. He didn't know it was Godzilla. We get stupid melodrama in the modern times, and Shaw decides to throw Rand's tapes out to sea. They try to get past Border Patrol, and turns out one of the guards is a friend of Shaw's, so they're okay. We then see Mr. Cuck again with Bodyguard Lady, and one of his superiors, who is a bitch, decides to kick him off and get Bodyguard Lady to find Shaw, because yeah! But Tall Lady says she's not going without Mr. Cock. Back to 1954. The military is on the beach, and there is another retcon in the comics as though it was only here to stop another titan, Shinomira. But that thing is nowhere to be found. Just imagine how much better this would be if it got Godzilla fighting Shinomira. But no, we need humans only, no monsters. All it would have taken was some simple dialogue, even just saying, hey, wait, there's two of them? But no, such a missed opportunity, and I'll never get over it. What actually happens is we get the first new Godzilla content in a few years. He comes on the beach, caters the classic scientist thing, and says, <laughs> So she tries to stop the bomb. Lee stops her though, and it blows up in Godzilla's face. This is what killed Shinomira in the book. Also, Serizawa's dad was supposed to be here, but he's nowhere to be found. Even just one scene. That's it. No, no, he's not here. We do get a mention of Serizawa. Anyway, Godzilla isn't dead. We know this. Modern times, the main character's on a plane to Alaska. That's it. In the 50s, we see the aftermath of how the general guy has given them all the funding they need, in case there are more, which, ha, you ain't seen nothing yet, girl. The main characters land, they find Hiroshi's crashed plane and a dead guy, but it's not him confirming he's alive. They then find the camp, and everyone but Shaw's friend go inside. And it is he that discovers the plane landed just fine, and a creature destroyed it. So he runs and gets the plane started, but the rest of the main characters try to run, but a mole thing pops out and destroys the plane, kills Shaw's friend, cuts to black. Episode 4, we begin in Utah, and a lady getting some alert on an old piece of technology, and she pulls the whole, I need to see the head of this organization cliche. Then, back to the mole monster thing from episode 3. So, it's about to get them, and instead of running, Kentaro shoots a flare gun and distracts it, because this thing is stupid. They flee and hide in a cave. May falls through the ice and makes a weird noise and freaks out because her legs are cold. She reminded me of this, to be honest. <laughs> I just almost died in that lake <laughs> of hyper bloody thing. I've had it already six times. That's the bloody siren! She yells at Kentaro and we go to Tokyo one year earlier where the most unnecessary scenes of how Kentaro and May met come into play. I don't f care. Get to the monster sh and Kurt Russell. Basically, all you need to know is May is bitchy and super stiff and blank acting is done here and it's Back to the main characters. May is still upset and freaking out because apparently she'll die of hypothermia. She's a to Kurt Russell and Kentaro. After he says he saw town, she then is more of a and we flash back again to the f***ing melodrama. This is so shit and I hate it. Ah! Back to the Arctic. Flipping May and Kate think Kentaro's lost it and he's a baby about it. So to get away from the stupid fighting, Kurt Russell sends him away. And then Kate all of a sudden doesn't want him to go. What? What? You were just insulting and yelling at him earlier, you great f What's your problem? Cut back to Barnes from the beginning, and she is seeing Bitch Superior Lady about a black hole thing in Alaska. Oh my goodness, could this be Godzilla? Hell no, it's a blue thing. Gintaro is freezing to death, and May is apparently paralyzed and wants whiskey, even though alcohol lowers the body's ability to retain heat when someone has hypothermia. Gintaro collapses of exhaustion, and Shaw, Kate, and May have been walking in circles because of the Titan or something. Gintaro then hallucinates May, and another stupid flashback later, May is dying, which is not the worst thing for the audience. They've built the fire, and they burn possibly vital documentation in order to keep it running. Then Mole Thing attacks, and turns out it absorbs heat. Back at Monarch, Mr. Cuck finally states the obvious to his bitch superior lady, because she's claiming the readings are impossible. Kurt Russell then comes up with a plan to draw Mole Thing to the heat and kill it. May then tells Kate they'll have to leave her behind, which please do. And then she says to Ditch Shaw, who is the only person who knows what he's doing, but yeah, go get yourself killed too while you're at it. I've had enough of the f***ing melodrama. But we've got six episodes to go, so buckle up. Katana hallucinates his dad and finds an abandoned shelter thing and hallucinates his flashback with his dad and apparently it turned out he didn't attend the thing and never saw his dad again. I don't care! Give me Godzilla! Kentaro finds a thing that shows his dad has been there. Shaw is going to burn his dead friend when the mole thing shows up. May and Kate run, and there's a helicopter above where Russell lights the fire and distracts the mole. May and Kate... Get to the chopper! And Shaw teleports somehow to catch up to them, and Kentaro is already on the thing, and Shaw sees the blue as a hole to the hollow earth. May, the bitch that she is, thanks Kate instead of Kentaro and holds her hand. Oh my goodness, what could this ever be hinting at? Turns out it was Monarch and Mr. Cook is there to meet up with them at the end. Episode 5, they've locked everyone in interrogation rooms and Kate says to camera that she will not be intimidated. Oh my god! And Kentaro throws a fit like a baby. So May gets interrogated by Mr. Cock's partner, who I'm going to call Tall Lady from now on. So she tries to get May to give her her backup because her computer was destroyed that had Randa's files on it. Tall Lady then gets May upset when she says they're going to name the mole thing after someone else instead of her. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, f*** the show. So Tall Lady comes back and says they know nothing. 
Mr. Cuck says he doesn't like that. They're treating them like criminals and bitchy superior lady is like, says the guy that tried to kidnap them. Oh my God. Would you rather have important government secrets revealed, you mangy shit? So Mr. Cuck wants to recruit the random kids and bitch superior says Shaw's her problem now. So Mr. Cuck lets them go and they all insult him for good measure. But he yells at them, which tall lady told him to do, because of course. So they have plane tickets and May is a to the airport lady and yells at Kentaro who doesn't want to just up and leave because she's an absolute bitch. So May keeps trying to get out, but Kate wants her to stay, guys. Fucking scissor it. They show Shaw a video of his friends and himself and Bitch Superior comes in and gets into an argument with him. He says he's not going to stop searching for Hiroshi and he insults her because he's Kurt Russell. And I love this little smile that he does. We get another how does Kurt Russell look so good for 90 comment from Tall Lady and we're back in San Francisco which has been decimated. More stupid melodrama from Kentaro and May. Give me f***ing Godzilla already! F*** me! So, they're picked up by this homeless looking guy and he dumps a bunch of exposition on how most people live in this trailer park now. They see her mom who is Kumiko from Cobra Kai and more stupid melodrama ensues. They break into the destroyed San Francisco and back to Shaw and they talk about Godzilla and yet they still can't f***ing show him! But Superior then tries to physically intimidate Shaw, which, come on man, that's Kurt Russell. We then get a flashback and guess what? Kato's a girlfriend! Oh my god! This is what happens when you get Joey out! They got his grubby fingers on everything! We then get a stupid flashback and people finding out about Godzilla. Still nothing. More sneaking around in another flashback when Kate decides she's going to leave her stupid girlfriend that I couldn't give less of a shit about. They evade the guards because Kentaro throws a shit bag that attracts cats and everyone leaves. More walking and shit melodrama and then they're spotted. They run and hide out in the subway and instead of finding them some random guy tries to run and then they get him instead. So they escape through the tunnel thing and Kate yells at Kentaro for being optimistic about their situation because this tunnel is triggering her PTSD. I'm a victim. Oh my god. I guess someone forgot to tell her it was a safe space. So, she gets upset that Kentaro is trying to find a way out and cries like a baby once again. I need to do flipping breathing with girl boss here. And then we get a scene of Kate in bed with her girlfriend. <laughs> so, when Kate is coming to terms with just how much of a cunt she is, May tells her that she's amazing and Kentaro comes up with a brilliant idea to follow a load of cats. They break in Hiroshi's office and find the map that works with the sun and they find out where Hiroshi's been. So, her mom finally is like, yeah, my husband was a bastard. And we name drop Godzilla again despite he hasn't shown up. May then calls Tall Lady because she's a bitch and then we see Shaw getting transported somewhere in the end. Episode 6, we begin in the 50s after the last pointless episode. We get Kay complaining about her dress and the general guy praising Lee and Monarch and then we get subtle racism of the Japanese because it's post-World War II, which makes sense. Anyway, Kay is still salty because they supposedly blew up Godzilla in episode 4. And then Lee dances with her and it's clear they're into each other because we need a f***ing love triangle and it's Godzilla show without Godzilla. I called this back in episode 2. We get more melodrama and Lee gets a message from Randa. Then back in modern times, Tall Lady, whose name is Michelle, breaks Shaw out of containment and we find out that she is Sandra Ford's sister. You remember that character that got like three minutes of screen time in Godzilla 2014 and died right away? Nah, me neither. Back in the 50s, Randa has found a reading that points to a titan in Japan. Kay and Randa go to Japan when Lee stays behind in the US to speak to the general guy. Then we go back to our three insufferable leads and Shaw. It's broken into Kate's house with Tall Lady because now we can't have bad guys, they're just misunderstood. Anyway, the others are like, no, but Shaw is like, well, she's all right. So Bitch Superior Lady and Mr. Cuck investigate Hiroshi's office and Mr. Cuck suggested that you use satellites to locate where Hiroshi is. 50s, they're made up with a guy who looks like Dr. Noto from Minus One who has like a bomb device and we get a reference to Monster Island. Anyway, this doctor has found a gamma ray spike and he has built this device to communicate with the Titan like the Orca from King of the Monsters. Back to modern in Algeria, May is being a bitch to Tall Lady about wanting to go home and Kate starts bitching because a guy looks at her weird in the camp they get supplies from. And she's pissed because she has to work with good monarch people. Kate stops being a c**t when May brings up Alaska and Shaw brings up that millions of lives will be lost and she walks off. 50s, Lee gets a call from Randa updating him about the situation and Lee tries to ask General Guy if he can go to Japan as well, but General Guy basically tells him he'll fire him if he goes. Modern, they find Hiroshi with an old Orca device and he's trying to tell them to run, but they're too stupid to get it and Kurt Russell is the only one to realize something's wrong. 50s, they've turned the Orca device on, but the Titan won't come out. Lee arrives and Kay's upset with him because he'll now lose his job. Modern. Shaw realizes and they run, but a helicopter shows up with Mr. Cock and several armed men. 50s. Just as Lee is making out with Kay, Godzilla shows up, finally showing he's alive and well. Back in modern, Godzilla rises out of the ground and somehow the main character survives. And he gives Kate a look like, I'm back, bitch. He stands up, causes the helicopter to crash and stalks away. 50s. Lee tries to tell Puckett about Godzilla, but he's handed command over to another guy and Kay is all upset at him. Modern. Everyone in the helicopter died, apparently including Mr. Cock. Then Shaw tells him he's trying to help Godzilla. May and Kate go back to being insufferable and say they're out and because Kentaro's a simp, he goes with them. Then, after some simping from Kate, May tells them that apparently she was doing illegal shit and Monarch has dirt on her. She then is upset at her in the end. Honestly, all Godzilla has done in this show is have a bomb blow up in his face, swim around, stand up, and walk away. Great writing, guys. Really. Episode 7 opens showing that Mr. Cuck survived because he was under the sand. Okay. Uh. At the airport, May gets kidnapped by two men in suits. Kate goes and finds May isn't there. 
Turns out she was on a plane. Flashback of this British lady telling May how amazing she is. Mr. Cook walks in the portal, bloody and beaten up. Kate goes off on him, but he literally pulls a talk to the hand and walks off. Turns out he's done with everyone's bullshit and just wants to get out of here. Kate is so dumb, she thinks Tall Lady is still involved in Monarch with Mr. Cock. They tell him Hiroshi was there, and he believes that he's trying to stop Godzilla. So Kate says they're not helping him get shot because she's wet down below for May, so they're going to get her first. Gintaro is done with this shit, and Mr. Cock gets a call from Bitch Superior Lady and informs her about the situation. She, like, suspends him, and apparently May is not who she says she is. Like, I even care. So, because Gintaro is still a simp, he agrees to go after May. Cut to Dr. Barnes, who conveniently goes for a piss before armed men, Tall Lady, and Shaw take over the base. Apparently, Mr. Cook knew Hiroshi, and May isn't May, but Korra. So, flashback to Korra's job that I couldn't give two shits about. Dr. Barnes informs Bitch Superior Lady about the situation. Shaw raids the base. Mr. Cook, Kentaro, and Kate visit Korra's sister, who is not taking anyone's bullshit. They follow Korra's sister while Kate is a to Kentaro. Korra's sister obviously realizes it was BS. Kentaro then cucks himself, and she gives information. Turns out May crashed the system at some company because she got offended by her superior over not being a board member right away. F*** you. F*** you. I'm done with this melodrama. This is allegedly a Godzilla show. F*** you. So, Korra did this because they were using monkeys to experiment on. Cry me a goddamned river! Boo! Korra or May is the worst part about the show, and I couldn't be surprised if she's a self-insert of some activist piece of sh only encouraged by Jilby Herald and maybe others. Mr. Cog bullshit a Godzilla attack so they can break into the company. Turns out Korra was kidnapped by the company. So British Lady offers Korra a deal to be a spy for them or be f They find Korra who admits she's been a bitch and a horrible person and gets Kate and the rest to leave. They're then kidnapped by Monarch. Bitch Superior Lady and Kate have a who's a bigger off, which Kate wins because she's desperate to fucking scissor me. Mr. Cook suggests taking Monarch public, which I thought they did like right after 2014 because Sarah Zal couldn't cover that up anymore. But nope, it's a recon. So Korra goes to spy on Monarch and because Kate for some reason has made it her mission to scissor her, they go to help find Sean. So Bitch Superior makes the announcement without going to Sarazawa or Graham or anyone first, at least on screen. British Lady talks to her superior, Walter Simmons from GVK, and I feel like a dumbass because they mentioned it before by his first name. We get an Apex tease and Simmons doesn't appear probably because Demian B. Shear didn't want to be in a shitty show. Shaw goes back to Alaska and the Hollow Earth portal and kills the mole thing and makes the hole bigger. The end. Episode 8. Shaw has a flashback and is in Kazakhstan. In the 50s, a superior guy is basically telling Randa, Lee, and Kay that they're wasting time and resources looking for monsters, and he's more concerned with the Cold War tensions than Godzilla. He then is racist and gets himself a punch in the face for it. Kate, May, and Gintaro get like a tour of Monarch headquarters by Mr. Cook where he spots a bunch of exposition. In Kazakhstan, at a photoshopped building, they come back to the location that Kay died at. 50s. Lee, Randa, and Kay are still debating whether or not to tell the government Godzilla is alive. Kay is scared to build a bigger bomb. But because it's the Cold War, they'll be doing it anyway. Lee then says for them to build a map showing where the Titans are. Turns out, Mr. Cuck is now in that office. And he is trying to find a connection between the Gamma readings and Hiroshi's map. And with that, they figure out where Shaw is. Bitch Superior Lady doesn't want to send them to Kazakhstan to get Shaw, and is subsequently insulted by May for it. 50s. Kate tells Randa his evidence is and then turns into May for a minute when she says she's got shit from her past. But Randa says what I'm thinking, that he doesn't care. We then get a pathetic attempt of Randa trying to say he's got the hots for her, but fails miserably. They make up the map, and Lee was eavesdropping. President Kate is a to the team later when she tries to get them to take precautions. Uh, they go into a building and Mr. Cook thinks something is absorbing the radiation from the reactor. They find shells of those insect creatures from before, meaning they're a lot bigger now. They find a tunnel to the Hollow Earth, which Shaw is trying to make bigger. Doll Lady pulls a gun and threatens to kill, but Shaw shows up and will only talk to Kate. 50s. Randa comes up with the idea of Hollow Earth after he sees an ant go through a hole in the map, and it turns out Hiroshi is not Randa's son. Basically, Kate is afraid that because America is racist at this time, then it'll just be bad for Hiroshi. Shaw tells Kate about Hollow Earth, and apparently he's been there before. Then Kurt Russell also proves that he is way too good for the show and completely upstages Anna's away when it comes to acting. Shaw is trying to seal off the Hollow Earth and doesn't care that Monarch is getting readings because chances are it means nothing. 50s, Lee tells General Guy Godzilla is still alive. Mr. Cook and Tall Lady argue while Shaw says he's doing this to make up for losing Kate. He then blows the charges and runs, but instead of following him, Kate runs in the opposite direction back to where the team is. Tall Lady gets away and Mr. Cook and Gintaro are about to run when May runs towards the portal for Kate just as she's coming back and falls into the Hollow Earth and Kate gives a look like, oh no, there goes my scissor opportunity. The insect thing comes up to play. Mr. Cook falls over and Kate is saved by Shaw who falls into the portal with her, unfortunately meaning that May is alive and well. Gintaro and Mr. Cook never get away. I hope they died. Once again, no Godzilla because f*** you, the end. Episode 9. Flashback to the 50s where Lee is talking to a young Hiroshi and leaves him his pocket knife. Turns out this is not the 50s but the 60s because Kate is already dead here. So it turns out Monarch is testing another orca type thing, this time right over the Hollow Earth and Lee is going to be basically go down there with a bunch of other expendables. What could go wrong? And before I continue, how does this guy turn into John Goodman in 10 years? So all while General Guy's exposition dumping, they charge the orca thing to call a titan so the tunnel is possible to get through. So they lure one up briefly and then drop them. So something goes wrong, everything goes haywire, several expendables die, and they think Lee died as well. Modern times, Gintaro's in the hospital with Mr. Cup and Bitch Superior Lady. They tell him Shaw, May, and Kate died. Well, Mr. Cup was saved by Tall Lady and all the expendables died or were captured by the local. So Bitch Superior Lady tells him they died, which uh, they didn't. Gintaro's a baby about it and she tries to tell him to f*** off. Meanwhile, Shaw's alive in the Hollow Earth 
forth, and he's like in a forest, which we've never seen before. He walks right past May, who unfortunately survives. Shaw finds her, and they have to avoid the lightning springing out from the ground, and I'm sorry. But how did they survive this? GBK said that without the heat, you could be instantly crushed, but they're fine? 60s. General Guy tells Randa Monarch is being shut down, and Randa is feeling guilty that Lee died, quote unquote. So, Shaw tells May how he made it back, apparently. Time works differently here. In the 60s, Lee is in a hospital in Japan, it looks like. He keeps asking for Randa, but they don't say anything. Lee escapes the bed and holds the nurse hostage, but then a 30-year-old Hiroshi shows up and tells him he's been missing 20 years. So this is why Lee is so young, because he's been gone for 20 years in the Hollow Earth, which apparently time works different, but GBK didn't ever say that. Lee has a panic attack, so Hiroshi apologizes to the nurse, who is clearly Kintou's mom, and says he doesn't want to talk to Shaw because he thought he died. In the 80s, Hiroshi tells Lee that he's being held in case he's radioactive. Apparently, Lee followed the dragon thing to the Hollow Earth, and they attempted recon, but ran into a monster, which killed the expendable people that survived, and the dragon was there also, and Lee got sucked up back to regular. Earth. Hiro tells him he didn't believe his dad's theories, and Lee is being moved to the retirement home. Hiroshi shows up at Kentaro's and acts like nothing happened. We get more melodrama, Kentaro's a baby, as usual, and then Hiroshi is one, and Kentaro yells at him. So, Kate's fine, obviously, she runs into a monster who just passes her by, and then she crawls, not runs away. The monster notices and goes after her, but guess what? Kay is still alive. <laughs> no! No, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm fucking done! Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! I'm done! Motherfucker! I'm done! I'm done! I'm so done! No, don't do it! You can't! Episode 10, Kate's fine, it doesn't tell Kay she's her granddaughter. It's going back to the whole characters never stayed out cliche. Kay asks if Sean ran over with her, but Kay instead starts to throw another fit. But Kay is actually kind of badass, so she shuts her up. There is a scene with Kintel and that I don't understand a world because not subtitles. So they find out Kay sent the signal to be rescued from here. So they find May, and Lee doesn't immediately come out because he doesn't want to see him old. Lee tells her about the recon mission and how time is different and Kurt Russell again, but also Mary and Mama, they'll give it a heartbreaking performance. And she finds out all these things, and it really sucks because this scene is a really good. Why couldn't we have this for the entire show. Mr. Kirk now has a can of bitch barely shoots him down when he wants to check the signal and he finally stands out there but she puts him down again like the cocky is. So can you use the orca thing to transmit the signal? When he asks about Hiroshi finally instead of bitching, Tate lies and says nothing but good things about him. So Lee plans to rewire and get home. Again, I can't understand Japanese but I'm pretty sure Kintaro's not left Hiroshi. Mr. Kirk then finds Kintaro's back to the news but anyway. So he tells Kintaro that he never set with the signal. We get another good scene with Tons and Mary Alamato and Kurt Russell where they talk to each other about Rinda and they clearly talking to each other. Lee tells Kate about the future as well. Hiroshi watches John Goodman's tape and Mr. Cog and Kintaro knock on the door and show me that Hiroshi eventually agrees after much melodrama. Lee, Kay, May, and Kate find the pod Lee killed the first time, which still works. Kay wants to stay behind because she's skilled. Kate says one thing and she immediately 180s. They turn the order on and lure the dragon over. It starts causing chaos and a thing gets unplugged. Lee goes out and plugs it in and is about to down and Godzilla finally shows up and the dragon starts to fight him for no reason. Godzilla almost fires, but the thing pukes out and he time breaths to make sure it worked with it. He doesn't get on in time and dies, which May doesn't care about, and they fly past Godzilla and make up. Kintaro is there, so it's Hiroshi. We get great acting in Dennis K and Hero reunited for 50 years. That British lady is here as well, meaning they used Apex. And Charles says it's been two years and Mr. Carp works for Apex now, and we get a quick con cameo to end the show on a cliffhanger, which unfortunately means they might make a season two. And it sucks, because this episode was decent, and I'm sad they could lay off because it was so interesting. So this means this is just before King of the Monsters, so theoretically they could do season two, just get Joey Harold away from it now. Its old appearance was also technically a cameo, which sucks, and I hate it. This show has some good aspects, but they're overshadowed by writing and recapping and weak characters. I looked it up and got to look at roughly 3 minutes and 11 seconds of screen time and almost a 6 hour show, which is the lowest so far I think ever. They plaster them on the posters and because otherwise no one would watch this talk Literally, I think this was the best one along with maybe the first two episodes. Even they have their problems. Anyway, moving on. Bulls! Kurt Russell is way too good for this show. Why he signed on, I have no clue. And some other actors get good performances like Brian Russell and to a lesser extent Anders Holm, Mary Yamamoto, Christopher Herodal, and Takehito Hira. The leads are clearly inexperienced, especially Anna Soleil and Red Ratabi, who can't act for <laughs> Lucy Clemens is insufferable as May or Cora or whatever the f And that's not necessarily her fault, because she can actually be likable. She's proved that with her acting in The Flash. It's like Riva. It's the writer's fault. Hey, that's funny. An insufferable girl boss who just so happens to be black and played by an actor who probably just happened to be a part of it and both these shows were worked on by Joe B. Harold. Coincidence? I think not! Hell, I'll even throw in Rise of the Beast for good measure. Dominique Fishbach's character is exactly the same. Am I the only one who notices this? Joe B. Harold is, I guess, hard for insufferable girl bosses who just so happen to be a person of color. Oh, and side note, this vacuous sucker is going to be writing the My Hero Academia remake. So, be prepared, anime fans. In this show, all your current day sh** applies, and every man is a cuck except for Kurt and Wyatt Russell. The women are insufferable girl bosses designed to put down every guy and have a who's a bigger s*** off when they need to put down another woman. No one cares about whether Kintaro will get his art exhibit approved or not. No one cares about May's past. No one cares that Kane is a lesbian and lets some children die in 2014. They care about Godzilla, who isn't even in this bloody bollocks-ass show until the very end with Super 
erotic appearances here and there. And he doesn't even do anything other than wake up from a nap, swim around, have a thing detonated in his face, and fight a thing that no one has heard of or cares about at the end. It is bull****. Half of these poker monsters are OC, and nothing wrong with that. They can work like the Mutos, but these are mostly just obstacles like the bug. Damn it. Godzilla is the only monster from Toho here, and I get licensing and all is hard, but still nothing. Not even a more obscure one. God damn, what the hell? No Varen or Eberron? Holy sh**. And they just suck. Oh, big bug. Or a big dragon thing. Big spider, big crab, big mole. Jesus H, man. Are you that unoriginal? And then you've got the story. Oh, Jesus, what? Again, they've taken a film and stretched it into ten episodes, these pig s***ers. Just like that prick Dave Filoni and his writing team have pulled in Ahsoka and have taken the piss out of a beloved IP. And also, the story is just shite. Full of CW levels of melodrama. These twats can't write a thing. They're wankers, a lot of them. If I had to describe this piece of s*** in one sentence, it'd be the Godzilla show without Godzilla. Because he shows up three times. You think people saw Godzilla 14 for the humans? No. You think people saw King of the Monsters or GBK for the humans? No. Hell, do you think people saw Minus One for the humans? No. But they were very, very pleasantly surprised when Toa decided to say, F*** what America's doing with entertainment. Let's give the people a f***ing amazing story and make bank in the process. You think these f***ing writers of this show care? Do you think Jerky Handjob here gives a sh about Toho or Godzilla? No. All these producers and inexperienced directors and companies and writers, do you really think they care? No. The virtue signal to the universe kills itself, but only so that they can get ahead and everyone knows it. They'll claim, oh, we're doing this for this group of people, we're going to destroy this IP and have a bunch of gay sh** so people can feed themselves, blah blah blah. No, you're f not. You're doing it for yourself so you can have the show media like Screen Man, CBR, and Variety claim to call these fatuous, sanctimonious, narcissistic pieces of garbage, starting a fire and I fuel to the fire of their f eagles so they can suck the life out of everything. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if Toa decides to ignore this completely and never give these people control over this IP ever again, because these companies like Toa and Nintendo are smart and extremely protective of their IP. How to hold out this, I have no clue. This is a cautionary tale for Legendary and the MonsterVerse as a whole. Hopefully, this is just one bad apple among the bunch. But you know what they say? Leave that bad apple in, and the rest will go bad. GXK doesn't look too bad. They're leaning into the dumb fun aspect, which, fine, it'll at least be entertaining, that's all I care about. Minus One is light year superior to this piece of trash. Just go watch that instead of this. This isn't enough to ruin it, but I'm sure if they're not careful, we will have a repeat of TriStar Zilla on our hands. Cuz, think about it. There is nothing left to destroy. Only Harry Potter and DreamWorks still stand. And they're rebooting Harry Potter with a show. If Legendary doesn't tread lightly, Toho will take Godzilla away from America. And you know what? If Minus One is any indication, that may not be a bad thing.